it seems that there is a major twist as far as India's next T20 captain is concerned with Gautam Gambhir now taking charge. Hardik Pandya's expected appointment as India's new T20 captain has seen a major twist. With Guru Gambhir and Ajit Agarkar, the chief of the selection committee, advocating for a different choice. While it looked like a formality that Hardik Pandya would replace Rohit Sharma as the new T20 captain, reports are now suggesting that Ajit Agarkar and Gautam Gambhir are pushing for Surya Kumar Yadav, popularly known as Sky, to be the captain. Hardik has been the white ball team's vice captain for more than a year now and has led the T20I team for extended periods when Rohit Sharma was absent post the 2022 World Cup. Meanwhile, ahead of the India vs Sri Lanka ODI series, it seems like coach Gautam Gambhir has also sent a stern message to senior players. According to sources, Gambhir wants all seniors, including Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli, Ravindra Jadeja and Jasprit Bumrah to make themselves available for the ODI series versus Sri Lanka. Because considering that this will be the last time India will play in the ODI format before the Champions Trophy next year. Gautam Gambhir has therefore stated that it is important to see how the players are shaping up. Remember, the senior players have been resting since the T20 World Cup 2024 and given that Sri Lanka is no longer one of the top tier teams in Indian cricket, a lot of senior players traditionally rest themselves during Sri Lankan tours. Now, amid all the chatter regarding the T20I captaincy and how things will work under new Guru Gautam Gambhir, 1983 World Cup skipper and cricketing legend Kapil Dev spoke exclusively to my colleague Karishma Singh. Listen into his thoughts. Gautam Gambhir taking over as the head coach of Indian cricket. He has uh, some demands of making Surya as the captain or asking senior players to come back for ODI series. How do you look at Gautam Gambhir's era? Let's hope he will do a good job for the country. And it's too early to say he got a job. We can only wish him good luck. Let me now go across to my esteemed guest joining me. We have Atul Vasan, former cricketer, and Chandesh Narayan, author and sports broadcaster. Thank you both gentlemen for joining me. Atul, I'll come to you first. I'd like to start with you, your initial comments as to where you weigh in as to whether uh, who will be the better T20I captain, whether it be, should it be Hardik Pandya, or should it be Surya Kumar Yadav? Well, you know, uh, you know, you can only actually just uh, decide this when things happen. But I must say this, that... Uh, you know, whoever is the coach and the mandate actually given to him, Gautam Gambhir, he has to actually, um, you know, work by his uh, uh, dogma. And I think um, it will be wrong to actually, you know, just judge him okay. right now. But what I feel personally is that Hardik Pandya was great, was prepared and prepped and primed for this post. And he has done pretty well. And he's a T20 specialist. He yeah. did well in World Cup. And suddenly to, you know, just uh, uh, dump him uh, on the altar, as you say, uh, will be slightly uh, improper from my liking because you know that was the uh, you know the, the baton was passed by Rahul Dravid onto this place but suddenly I think you can change you can see yes. how it works out because Surya Kumar Yadav also uh, is not um, there's not much um, body of work as a captain and Hardik Pandya has done well as a captain so just this exactly. change drastic change why uh, I don't know what has gone wrong I don't know what is the personal thing but it has to be a collective decision and just one person coming in and just changing everything around. Might just you know, uh, you know, as they say, topple uh, uh, the gravy train. Indeed, and the, the official logic what we're getting to know from our sources is that Hardik Pandya has had issues with injuries before and he needs to be rested and his body needs to be preserved in terms of his fitness and also that he's available in other formats of the game as well. But Chandesh Narayan, do you agree with that logic which has been cited accordingly from what we understand from the Gautam Gabir camp? Or do you feel that the new coach is already being a bit too disruptionist by disturbing the status quo, as Atul was said, and impacting the inheritance cycle as has been set already in the Indian cricket team. I completely agree with uh, Atul because uh, I think that uh, you have a system in place and uh, remember that uh, Hardik, like Atul said, was the natural successor to Rohit Sharma in the T20 format. Uh, and... Uh, he do, he do, yeah. he hardly plays the other formats, and India hardly plays any ODI cricket. In any case, he's not played Test cricket since 2018. So, uh, in any case, most of the senior players have been used to picking and choosing the bilateral white ball series that they play. So, I would have thought that uh, Hardik is the natural successor. I think all these problems or all, all these confusion can be solved if the BCCI. Uh, 
holds a proper press conference after the selection committee meeting or uh, uh, has uh, gotham facing yeah. up to the media uh, uh, because he's not faced up the media after his appointment as the india head coach all these uh, problems can be uh, problems or the so called confusion can be solved and i think uh, in any case uh, uh, we still don't know if the appointment is only for this series or if it is an appointment going forward uh, is he a long term t20 captain whoever is appointed yeah. uh, also at the end of the year this is something that has been in my mind india tours australia for a five test series and at the same time a t20 team is scheduled to play a series in south africa what happens if sky is the is anointed the next t20 captain does he take the t20 team to uh, south africa or uh do you give one more chance to him in australia as a test player so these are the sort of questions that they need to uh, answer yeah. but till they don't come out openly and answer the questions we can only speculate about what they are actually thinking fair enough. we can speculate but again that's the point indian cricket is such an emotional sport that everyone has an opinion and one really can't leave the fans out as stakeholders atul the other important burning issue that has come in this point is uh gautam gambhi reportedly insisting that the senior players such as virat kohli rohit sharma ravindra jadeja and jaspreet bumrah be also available for the sri lankan odi series the justification being given is that this is the only odi exposure they will get before the champions trophy which will be played in february whether it be in pakistan or somewhere else that is of course another tba but is this another justified decision on one hand yes if it's the only odi series everyone should be available for selection but on the other hand it's the sri lankan series no offense to the sri lankans but they are no longer a tier a opponent for us they're not even playing the champions trophy and players like virat kohli and rohit sharma are expected to be automatic selections it's a good idea to this is a good time to test out the bench strength do you agree with that tactic as well atul yes i agree with that i agree with the god come be there that you know if you are available then you can't just pick and choose which series you play because that sends a wrong signal and if the coach and the management wants you to play you have to play yeah. uh, you know uh, coach and the uh, the system is in place is that they know when you need a rest and which is uh, not important but if this feel for the larger good of the indian team and the preparation they need to belong to the team they probably sit out for a couple of matches um, and you know they can give chances or you know but they have to be seen to be doing the right thing you can't just come and suddenly parachute yourself down in the team okay. just before the series which is a wrong thing to do because the players will perform well they also know that they are just be used as a stepney you know as soon as the tire is repaired uh, they will be dumped back as a stepney and the new tire will be put back which is uh, not the right way to go i think if indian cricket has followed uh, australian template uh, they have actually achieved a lot because of the australian template they followed because of the propriety because of the players knowing uh, and uh, you know the the transparency between the system maybe not to the media or other people but within the system each player knows why where and you know how he is going to play and where he fits in uh, so i think within this uh, if they can just follow this that uh, yeah. if you prime somebody just for this excuse that he is unfit or whatever if he is unfit then he will not be playing at all but if he is fit and in the team and he's been prepared for the role for two years and suddenly somebody becomes captain is the same thing as mumbai indians putting hardik pandya as a captain removing rohit sharma and then we know we all know what happened exactly exactly chandesh to you uh, i want you to come in on that because as atul pointed out this policy of being players being able to pick and choose what tournaments they want to play for is not the right trend needs to be corrected but then again it's been going on for ages it's i mean whether it be sachin tendulkar and virendra sehwag i remember in the initial parts of dhoni captaincy era dhoni mahendra singh dhoni himself would often not be available for a lot of series towards the end of his tenure and now we are seeing the same with rohit sharma and virat kohli as well with players like jaspreet bumrah there's another threat also that given the he's really the jewel in india's crown when it comes to bowling attack why risk him to a possible injury just before the champions trophy so is this a trend which needs to be buckled in terms of players all players should be available for all series should not be able to cherry pick or is it time to also put a bit of management schedule management given the fact that india plays so much cricket across so much formats Uh, i think that uh, that is there already in place uh, like atul said they don't ne- really need to communicate that to us publicly but uh, in- internally everybody is aware of what they are supposed to do which format they are supposed to do how many deliveries they need to bowl in a in the net session how many uh, matches they need to play they really manage their schedules very well uh, 
I uh, I think that there's also a one-day series before Champions Trophy against England. Uh, there are three matches there uh, against England in February, just before the Champions okay. Trophy. So I think that uh, uh, you already have those three matches. In any case, uh, uh, I think bilateral one-day series uh, don't really have much of a context. So it wouldn't really make a big difference if... Uh, these three okay. superstars or four superstars don't turn up for this one-day series. So I still believe that someone like a Rohit Sharma might still turn up for those three matches against uh, uh, Sri Lanka as the leader. Remember, there's a one one and a half month break uh, before the next series against uh, uh, Bangladesh gets underway on September 19th. So that might be something that the the players might look forward to. Uh, so Rohit might still end up leading the side in Sri Lanka in the one-day series, but overall. I think uh, this bilateral white ball series or any bilateral ODI or T20 series don't have much of a context and that's something that most players keep talking about and that's why they sort of look to take uh, breaks during those uh, those matches. Uh, so I think it's fair on the part of the players and it's also fair on part of Gambhir to demand that they are there because this is the first time that he'll be managing this group as the head coach with the big boys being there. Remember, they won't be there for the T20 series. So he would want to have interactions, talk to them. There's okay. only that much that you can talk over messages and over, over Zoom calls and so on and so forth. You would want to have one-on-one yeah. -on -one, uh, meetings as well with them. Maybe they ha he has it with them uh, before the Bangladesh series at an extended camp. Who knows? Okay, my final question, Atul, I'll, I'll let you have the last word. The concern as a fan or as someone who followed cricket was when Gautam Gambhir was brought into this thing that he could, could perhaps could turn out to be quite disruption is because he's roughly of the same generation as the senior players like Virat Kohli and Rohit Sharma and then there would be ego battles. Now, Indian cricket traditionally is always done well when the coach is somewhat in the backseat like uh, in Rahul Dravid or a Ravi Shastri or a Gary Kirsten and has let the players be in the limelight and be the stars at this point here. But... There is also fear that Go that Gautam Gambhir may actually turn out to be a bit more of Greg Chappell than Gary Kirsten. <laughs> uh, given the two co debates, I'm not going to call them controversies yet, but given that the two debates that have already come in within a few days, Chandesh, I'll come to you as well. Let me just get a word from Atul. Given that there is a few days into Gautam Gambhir's tenure as coach, and we've already had two debates coming in, are there genuine fears of Gautam Gambhir being a bit too disruptionist this early on in his coaching tenure? Well, we always uh, thought about it, and you know, Gautam has his own uh, mind. But you know, he has, I think he's smart enough to know that uh, uh, when to actually pull back a bit, because you know, certain players actually have earned that kind of leverage sometimes to pick and choose and all that. And you have named a few of them, and I yeah. think it's justified that when you've done so much, then sometimes even the team's uh, dogma doesn't sit well with your personal, uh, uh, you know, uh, mindset at that point, and you are allowed to go that extra uh, mile, which normally a player shouldn't get. And in India system, I think uh, that has to be. If he understands this, then I think uh, this uh, transition time for the next year or so, when Virat and Rohit are going to be there, will be will be uh, you know amicable. But I think if you just have these, uh, you know, um, star, uh, you know, if you take a stand and and you don't back down, then we might just see a meltdown, which I hope doesn't happen. And I think uh, uh, Rohit and Virat actually yeah. should sit down with the team management, not just Gautam, with the other actually uh, stakeholders. And have just made the, their exit plans more transparent so that there is not much uh, traction and much uh, conflict. Okay. Chandesh, you wanted to make a point. No, I was just saying that, you know, Atul was uh, a player when. Uh... In 1990, Bishan Bedi, the late Bishan Bedi, had a run-in with the then captain Azruddin. Then 17 years later, we had the Greg Chapel era. Let's hope that 17 years later, we don't follow yeah. the pattern of the history repeating itself after every 17 years in Indian cricket with uh, conflicts. In any case, Ritangshu, I think that we are in for an interesting time in Indian cricket. And as media people, as watchers of the game, analysts of the game, we're going to have an interesting time with Gautam Gambhir as the head coach. There's going to be no... Uh, shortage of drama in this period, I suppose. Interesting Interesting is the word. I mean, it's the safest word you could think of given the fact that there is so much of emotional investment in the cricketing team, given the fact that we have finally won a trophy. I mean, as they say, you said the 70 year jinx, satra pe khatra, as they often say in Hindi, while playing gully cricket, that's a big concern now that remains to be seen. But thank you so much, Atul Vasan and Chandesh Narayan, for joining us with your views on this very short debate about the future of Indian cricket.